Welcome to MSP Dispatch, your source for community news events and goings on in the MSP channel. Uh, I'm Ray Rossini, joined by my co-host as always, Tony Francisco. How are you doing, Tony? Excellent, Ray. How are you doing? Another beautiful day. Uh, lots of news since uh, Monday. Why don't you say we get right into it? So in our first news, uh, we have MailChimp, a popular uh, program used to send marketing emails out, subscriptions, uh, lists, and so on, uh, was breached this week uh, due to a an effort of social engineering. That's where someone comes uh, giving you false information, and uh, they use that information to uh, fraudulently gain access to accounts. Um, basically, your grandmother's hurt. Uh, I need her social security number so I can get her medical assistance and you feel bad and give her your her social security number. Uh, so this has been a common theme. It was used in the past on Amazon to gain access to password resets used via chat. Usually there's some sob story attached to it, but social engineering can be done via any method. Uh, and they use these, uh, they use the social engineering to gain access to records the prevailing thought is to be used for phishing campaigns. Uh, MailChimp has hundreds of millions of records, uh, contact information for all these mailing lists, all this contact information. Um, there's stories that were put out on uh, Hacker News, and the prevailing thought is it's going to be used to for crypto phishing scams. But truthfully, it is such a wealth of information, it can be used for nearly anything. Uh, Tony, when you're looking for tools for this marketing tools subscription tools or any kind of tools you're using for your company do you go back and research if there's been breaches or um, how they've responded to those things is that way at all in how you select your tools uh absolutely in fact i i think if you're looking for a marketing tool you've got to remember that you're putting all of the company customer potential customer information inside this tool and if they have a history of being exploited you are essentially putting all of that gold <laughs> that that material that you work so hard to to receive in a location that can be you know taken by others so a hundred percent absolutely yeah absolutely and you know in other news because mailchimp's not the only one we also have here uh, Fox News records. Now, this wasn't actually a hacking attempt. This was uh, given to us, I believe it was a CERT uh, news release or a CERT release. Uh, but here on infosecuritymagazine.com, we have Fox records, 13 million records leaked from Fox via an open file share. Um, we've seen this before with uh, S3 buckets, Amazon S3 buckets without proper permissions. Not saying that this was an S3 instance here, um, but basically just poor security uh, and obviously not doing any kind of audits, uh, but records including contact information for uh, Fox employees, names of celebrities, cast and production crew members, their ID uh, numbers, their ID, Fox ID numbers, uh, you know, all of this stuff could be used for phishing, could be used for account access. Uh, and this is frustrating, right, Tony, because when this happens, you don't really have any control when your information is leaked. It's it's just watch and make sure nobody's using your stuff. Uh, excellent point, Ray. And, and I think that the one common denominator that is commonly, uh, unfortunately, overlooked is the just sheer carelessness of leaving something exposed that can be exploited uh, and the value inside can be, uh, you know, consumed by others in ways that you didn't imagine. The um, the hard drives that have been left around, the uh, prototype iPhones and, and Android devices that have been left around and, and leaked out, um, the, the, the types of computers, laptops have literally been left there that are new prototypes. Those are hardware examples of uh, something that is now much more prolific where a thumb drive is left but the information inside that thumb drive uh, it could be catastrophic. And those are everything from health records um, to employee records uh, internally to confidential information um, that has a, you know, a much larger financial value in the market if placed in the wrong hands. Absolutely. And as much as I wish, I would love to say this is the last one. Truthfully, this stuff just keeps happening. Uh, it's it's going to go on <laughs> over and over. You just got to keep an eye out, stay vigilant with your data and uh, pray for the best, I guess. In other news, uh, specific to the mergers and acquisitions uh, section, uh, Elon Musk acquiring 9.2% of Twitter has had a uh, an enormous effect 
uh, throughout many industries. Um, that initial 9.2% stake was capped as, as illustrated uh, on, on multiple publications. Uh, CNBC has been covering it very well. Uh, the stock price surged uh, up to 27% initially uh, with an overall close, I believe 2% on Tuesday. Uh, but that initial surge was received very well. There's been enormous praise throughout the industry because of the potential changes that could be made. And I think um, we should be talking about that in, in a moment about what your what your interpretation is. But I'd like to note that there's been a 14, I believe it's at a 14 uh, 0.9% of the uh, company's common stock ownership. Uh, it's been capped at that 49% ownership. So Musk can't take anything further than that. However, the existing 9.2% ownership with a potential growth of up to 14.9% um, could have traumatic impact throughout the industry specific to the MSP community, which uses Twitter not only for an initial communication tool, but also a marketing tool, and probably most importantly, an alerting mechanism. So going back to you, Ray, how do you feel about when you're acquiring stocks in uh, marketing tools, as we as we mentioned before, uh, acquiring stocks, um, uh, or looking at the tools that you're gonna be using for communication to your customers, um, possibly alerting mechanisms, is something like this gonna influence your decision? So, you know, one of the things I always keep an eye on when I'm selecting my tool stack is I want to make sure, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm it's not going to be manipulated in any way, right? I, I want to make sure I have unfettered access to get information out. I'm less concerned with how others are using it for their own means, right? Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, just reading the tea leaves a little bit, um, Elon has always used Twitter as a, a way to pull the public, right? He's made stock decisions based on purchase and sell decisions based on Twitter polls, which is ridiculous, uh, you know, to, to the common person like you and me. Um, you know, I don't think that's going to have any bearing on my ability to use Twitter to send information out to my audiences. Um you know, and, uh, you know, it's just like Facebook and just like the other social platforms where, you know, how they control the messaging, it, it controls how others receive it, right? Whether it's, uh, you have your echo chamber effects or whether you have others, um, you know, them purposely holding information back to certain audiences, that's always a question. Uh, but it's so hard to qualify that, you know, I, I personally don't use that as a metric to determine if I'm going to use a platform or not. It, it, it's, it's, it's a great point, Ray. And and how, how about the potential benefits out of his involvement in uh, not just policy changes, but uh, feature set changes? He, he did a poll on Twitter about, should we have an edit button? Um, and, and, and those could be heavily influential from the perspective of, as I said before, the marketing, the communication, um, because now we're talking about a, a far more of a uh, live messaging tool as opposed to just a commentary in some degree. Um, do you anticipate any other benefits uh, from the feature set that he's gonna be throwing out? So as a user of a platform, that's something we always look for, right? Like we're always asking the platform creators, hear our feedback, implement these features, you know, and to get that kind of uh, feedback loop going at a massive public scale where you're having somebody come in that is not only that not only has a voice where millions of people follow and listen to him, but also he's known to take the feedback and make actionable steps. That's always uh, an amazing thing for a user of any platform. So I am curious to see that because we haven't seen that with Twitter before. Um, you know, Twitter's always struggled to see how they're going to monetize, how they're going to generate revenue out of the platform. Uh, and they've tried various things and it, to varying degrees of success. Um, so I'm very curious if, Elon's uh, particular input is going to have a, a meaningful effect. Um, I'm looking forward to it. They, they have a captured audience, and I don't anticipate anything slowing down anytime soon, especially after the acquisition of 9.2% uh, from an, such an influential person. So, Absolutely. So in our next story, uh, we have a special guest joining us. Um, you know, we have had a litany of uh, platforms go down and up, and that's just regular fare, right? That's normal 
platforms are rarely up 100% of the time. That we have to mitigate against those those outages. Uh, but sometimes those outages get a little painful. Uh, especially if they're repeated. Uh, specifically, I'm talking about uh, if you haven't seen, IT Glue has been, uh, IT Glue themselves have been going up and down for the last uh, several um, for the last several days since actually March 29th. Uh, it has not been a consistent full time outage. Uh, it's been uh, on and off where you get a 502 gateway error uh, and other things. Uh, they have uh, one of their RCAs that they put out last week included. Uh, included a AWS, blaming AWS for some database uh, degradation issues. Um, there's been some question around it, but even with the migration uh, to their backup plans and coming back forward, it's they've continued to have daily issues of, of going down. And joining us, we have Jason Slagle, uh, president of CNWR and noted security researcher. How are you doing, Jason? Oh, I'm good. How about yourself? I'm good, man. Uh, I appreciate you joining us because as an MSP, um, you use IT Glue, you use uh, other tools, and it's not so much specifically about IT Glue. Like I said, downtime yeah. happens everywhere, but a documentation platform like your PSA, and we had ConnectWise SSO that was down for, uh, had repeated outages over the last several months, uh, and they've made efforts. They put out a public statement yesterday um, talking about how they're going to address resiliency and, and introducing SAML to automate. Um, but when such a key piece to your your business's viability and operations goes down consistently, um, it's a pain. So my question to you is, how do you mitigate against that? How do you how do you plan against you know still being able to function when your key components are down? Yeah, it's it's really tough. Uh, the part of it, there's you know like two halves essentially to the a platform like that. You know, the first half is just a documentation platform, and that's pretty easy. You can obviously keep copies of documentation in multiple places and, and export runbooks. Uh, although I will openly admit, we had not, we do not have up to date runbooks for some clients, and the export process is not working, so it's it's difficult to get them. Uh, the second half of that platform is a little more nuanced and hard. Uh, if you use the platform as a password vault, right, you depend on things like auditing and if you just go willy-nilly export full list of passwords and drop them somewhere now you essentially have lists of passwords somewhere that may not be audited right so uh we're still trying to find a good solution uh to to handle the second half of that uh, it might end up being like a key pass file or something some other offline password database that we can use uh basically to break glass uh, but in the meantime i mean we make better use of uh, RMM and other tools to not need passwords, right? And in many cases, you don't actually need access to those passwords or, or it can wait. You're referring to like just-in-time access, account creation, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Other automation tools. Yeah, and, and that's that's part of the struggle too, right? Like, you you know, a lot of, I, I polled several people uh, in the MSP community as, you know, I typically do. And, you know, I asked, okay, what do you do? How do you, how do you handle this? I got answers everywhere from take the day off, joking around to, you know, we export full accounts and run books with passwords and stored encrypted disk images weekly. Well, we're making changes daily. I don't know if weekly is going to do it. Uh, there's also the challenge of IT glue specifically. And again, this is not an IT glue specific thing, but in IT glue's case, those run books are only available for 24 hours. Yeah. We're not sure if it's from request or from creation, but it's only available for 24 hours. And with the outages, run books haven't been available. Um, so, you know, and others have mentioned moving platforms. Of course, there's several platforms, but if you can't get your data out, yeah. how is that helpful? Um, it's pretty tough. I mean, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's easy to pick on one vendor here, right? But like there are, we have a stack of tools that it really hurts us when they're down, uh, you know, RMM, PSA, like any of those tools that are mission critical on our business, uh, you know, we're hurt when they're down. So it's a, it's a matter of finding the right level of uh, resiliency and right level of the, the cost of maintaining multiple of something versus the business operational impact of it being down, right? So I don't know that there's a, a perfect thing for every MSP out there, right? I think each has to weigh those two things. Yeah, and that's, that's the challenge. I mean, you know, and you have always, you know, you've been one of the people you've done plenty of webinars talking about incident response and, you know, uh, risk, uh, risk modeling. Um, 
and this is the other side of it, right? Maybe the risk is not breaches and yeah. and data loss. The the risk is just not lack of availability. Um, do you yeah. keep an eye on that when you're creating your plans? Uh, we do now. Uh, it, you know, it's one of those <laughs> things that uh, is, you know, we haven't. I haven't specifically table topped unavailability of a tool, but like I was just noting in our uh, in our internal Slack earlier that you know we need to make plans around that stuff, and some of that will likely be like, okay, what does it look like when tool X is down, right? Like, and, and starting to run through some of those scenarios. Uh, and, you know, maybe create some documentation as to how we handle those those outages. Absolutely. In my internal org, we, we actually do have a lot of that. Um, we have uh, failback scenarios for if uh, before if was if connect if uh, Slack was down. Now it's if teams are down, we have failback strategies for communications. Um, similar if the email connectors when we use ConnectWise, if it was down now, if it's Salesforce, Salesforce is down. So we actually do have those strategies, thankfully. Uh, but polling the MSP audiences in the various communities, um, that seems to be a rarity. So maybe we'll do a workshop at a later date. Um, talk about I was exactly just, how to handle that. <laughs> I, I was just going to say that's almost an entirely new show about not only the initial wireframing of the structuring of load balancing and, and mitigation of an individual failing point, uh, but also in, in the action of a use case scenario um, post strategy, uh, the implement, the actual implementation, what does that look like um, when executed? I, I'd be really interested in, in a class like that. Absolutely. And, you know, we want to hear from the audience. If you have uh, you know, a family out there, if you have strategies that you've implemented or questions on specific tool sets or looking for ideas, hit us up news at mspmedia.tv uh, and we'll discuss it on the next episode or in a future uh, segment. Uh, Jason, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight as yeah, always. You. If you want to reach out to Jason, he's on LinkedIn. He's on everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm everywhere. <laughs> absolutely. Thanks, Great to Jason. Jason. In other news, we have a correction to make for a story we brought up on Monday. Uh, to give you the update on that, Tony, can you fill us in? Absolutely, Ray. Uh, I, although I mentioned I am a consumer of an advocate of the Brave browser, uh, it does appear that it also is susceptible to CVE 2022-22965, uh, which uh, the vulnerability was a zero-day hack, I believe, to the Chrome browser. And that is a, com a critical component in the engine of the Brave browser as well. So although there are some superficial lockdowns as well as some uh, hard wiring that I happen to prefer, it looks as though that browser was affected. So the end message, please update your browser. Uh, all of your browsers, all of your applications as often as possible to uh, prevent those type of vulnerabilities from occurring. So I'd like to voice that, although Brave is a, a preferred browser for me personally, uh, it was affected by that vulnerability. Absolutely, and that, that's also a nice little, uh, a nice little reminder, don't assume anything's safe. If something's available for update, just update it. And that's a wrap for MSP Dispatch on April 8th, 2022. Remember, we're your source for news, community events, and commentary in the MSP channel. Tony, thanks so much for your insights uh, into these events of this past week. I appreciate it. Absolutely, Ray. Thank you so much. I think it's going to be an exciting week ahead. Uh, we'll bring all the news regarding mergers, acquisitions, uh, vulnerabilities, exploits, hacks, and uh, anything else that pops up that absolutely affects our incredible MSP community. Absolutely. And if you have any news, any uh, items you want to cover or you want to be on to uh, give any commentary on any of our stories, please reach out to us, news at mspmedia.tv, and we'll see you next time. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.